it's another getting real with Ashley Down. What, what, what? Don't ask why I did that. Anyway, I'm in a real, real good mood. I mean, I normally always am unless something's, you know, really terrible is happening. But anyway, I'm in a really good mood and I've just been so stinking inspired lately. I've been having some really awesome soul touching conversations with a really, really good friend of mine and goodness gracious, God is just working and moving and doing awesome things in my little life and I'm so excited and I'm very blessed to have very special people in my life. Anyway, awesome conversations. Well, one of the conversations that we had was about somebody that did something really, really kind for my friend. So they believed in a dream that my friend had and they went with it. They signed a check and they said, here, use this for your dream. And my friend who was blessed by this person's mighty faith in them, their life was changed because of somebody believed in them, because somebody did something nice for them. And it got me to thinking. And today I was at work and I, uh, one of the ladies that I work with had walked by. And I remember every single time I see this beautiful woman, the only thing I can think of is when my car, <laughs> my little crappy, I loved my little car, but I had a Nissan Sentra, a 1999 Nissan Sentra with like 300,000 miles on it, my little, my little white wonder. And it just kept going and going and going until it didn't go anymore. And I was getting ready to preach at my church and I had roses in the back. I was doing a whole message about roses and about how, you know, do not pick your roses apart. Do not try to make your roses bloom. Let God grow your roses and let God bloom those roses. And it's really funny because I just started thinking about this song that I really love called Like a Rose. And it's kind of the same thing. Like, let God grow you have a good place to grow and then grow in that good place and then just keep growing and grow, 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 grow awesomeness. So anyway, have these roses, like, I don't know how many, I had like five dozen roses in the back seat of my car that I just bought and roses are expensive in case anybody was wondering. And so got all these roses in the back of my car and my car slap dies in the middle of the intersection. And here's my little self and a little white Nissan Central Wonder with 300,000 miles on it. Like what in the world? It's rush hour. I just got off work. I'm going to church to preach and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And it's funny because on the way to church, I was worshiping. I had my worship music really loud and I'm worshiping and I'm singing to God and I'm just having the greatest time. And then boom, my car breaks. And I kept worshiping even though my car broke. I was like, really God, I'm going to worship you anyway. Anyway, so my car breaks down. This sweet, sweet guy that's behind me. Praise God, I'm a girl. Um, this sweet guy that's behind me gets out, pushes me out of the intersection because I was in the intersection, like in the middle where the car's like, if people could have hit me from like every single direction. And so this nice guy gets out of his car, super, you know, gentleman. Praise God, there's still gentlemen around. And he pushes me out of the way. And I was like, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it, thank you. And I truly believe um, one of my favorite songs in the whole wide world, it really brings me back to who I am. If I start forgetting who I am and I listen to this song, it brings me back like that. Anyway, it talks about people being angels and people showing up when you need them the most. And this man behind me showed up when I needed him the most. I was on my way to church, I was worshiping, and I pray everywhere I go that angels surround me. And angels truly did surround me that night and every night after. So, and right now while I'm driving. So this guy pushes me out of the way and then I call my church and I'm like, hey, please uh, forgive me, but I'm probably not gonna be there to preach because I just broke down in the middle of the intersection. So they had somebody else speak that night and one of the sweetest guys from my church came and brought me water and made sure I was okay and stayed with me until the tow truck came. Like how loving is that? Him and his wife. 
And so now, every time I see either him or his wife, that's the first thing that I remember. They've done awesome things for our church. I've known them most of my life, but that's the thing I remember because that's what impacted me. Okay, this whole message isn't necessarily about them. It's not about my friend who somebody wrote him a check so that he could put his music out when you know he was doing a Kickstarter. This is about God being amazing and using us to bless others. You can have the most money in the entire world. You can be a trillionaire, like I said the other day, which I don't even know if that's a thing. You can be a billionaire, but here's the deal. People aren't gonna remember how much money you had. They're not gonna remember how much, how nice your house was. At my dad's celebration of life service, nobody talked about how much money he had. Nobody talked about what kind of house he lived in. Everybody talked about the impact that his life made on theirs, the impact that his words made on their life, the impact of his love and the way he cared for people that were close to him. Y'all, you're missing it. You're in the wrong line of life if you're trying to build a kingdom, if you're trying to build your kingdom. If you're not trying to build God's kingdom, get out of line, boo. Get out of line. There's two lines. There's your kingdom, self-centered, and there's God's kingdom, God-centered. If you're not building God's kingdom, you better get out of line. Because you're wasting your time. You are spinning in the, the Bible says that you're basically, you know, uh, spitting into the wind. You're, you're toiling. You're wasting your time for nothing. This life is a blip. It's gone. What are you doing here that's going to impact eternity? What are you doing here that's going to actually change people's lives? Oh, well, I, I live in a mansion, and oh, I have this, and I have that. Okay, that's great. Guess what? You're going to die, and that mansion is going to probably, you know, be gone. Somebody else is going to get it. Unless you have a will, and then you leave it to somebody you love. But anyway, focus. It's going to be here. You're not going to be here. You're not going to be enjoying it. The people in your life aren't going to say, wow, had a really great house. Or maybe they are. Maybe that's all they'll say about you. Isn't that sad? I don't want people to say, wow, she lived in a great house. Good thing, because I've never lived in a fancy house. I've never needed to live in a fancy house. I've lived in a house with a mom and daddy that loved me and taught me how to love others the way Jesus does. And that's more riches than anybody that I personally know. So, there you go. But, my point is, people will forget. They'll forget what you looked like. They'll forget what your clothes what name brand you wore. They'll forget what kind of car you drove. They will not forget the way you treat them. They will not forget the way you encourage them. You get one life. Use that life to bless others. Use that life to help others. If you've got money and you see somebody that's doing a Kickstarter or that is trying to start a music career or maybe that's trying to start a business. One of my friends just started her own business then she did have supporters come and help her, but help somebody. If you got the means to do it, do it. Encourage somebody. Write them a letter and tell them that you believe in them. There are so many things that we can be doing with our life. Yesterday, my mom got a box. She had no idea who this box was from. Well, one of the neighbors that had came down, one of our the houses next to us is an Airbnb, and one of the neighbors that had came down sent her a gift to thank her for the way that she treated them when they were here. They were only here for a week, but she made such an impact in that there was a family of five. There were three little kids and two parents. My mom made such an impact in the way that she loved this family that they went out of their way to send her a thank you package and a card thanking her for everything she did for their family. How amazing is that? I know I have the greatest mom in the whole world. Shout out Mama Dukes. I love you. And Mo Mommy Pocahontas because I call her that too. But when I look at that and I'm like, she gets it. My parents get it. My daddy had like two pairs of jeans and a couple flannel shirts. And he wore the same thing over and over and over and over again. He didn't care about clothes. He didn't care about the way he looked. He didn't care about name brands. He cared about people. He cared about impacting the people in his life. He gave his stuff away. I got so like upset when he 
went to heaven because like his Bible that he used to, well, several Bibles that he used to write in and read, he gave them away. And I'm like, mom, where did this Bible go? And she's like, oh, he gave it to the neighbor. Oh, he gave it to his friend. Oh, he gave it to him. And I'm like, I would, I want my dad's Bible. Why is he giving his stuff away? Mom, where did this painting go? Oh, he gave that away. Mom, why did he give that away? And she's like, you know your daddy. He gave everything he had away. That's how he lived his life. He gave his life away. The Bible says that if you want to keep your life, you have to give it away. And the Bible is upside down compared to the world. Really, the world is upside down compared to the Bible. But the last will be first. The first will be last. To keep your life, you got to give it away. To lose your life, you got to keep it. So much of this world is me, 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 me. I want my kingdom. I want, I want my name in life. I want my name on a t-shirt. I love you, George Strait, but seriously, I don't worship you. I worship Jesus. But, you know, I want my name on a t-shirt. I want my name in lights. I was reading a story to my students today about Daniel and about how the king, Darius, made a decree that nobody in the land for 30 days could worship anyone other than King Darius. And King Darius loved Daniel and didn't realize what he was doing because there were people that didn't like Daniel that were trying to get Daniel in trouble because he had authority and he had anointing on his life. So Daniel obeyed God and King Darius said, okay, can't pray to nobody but me for 30 days. Well, Daniel was a man of God. He's like, mm -hmm. I love you, Darius. You're my, my friend, but I love God more. God's my number one. I'm praying to God. And so he prayed to God and he got thrown in the lion's den and the angels clothed, clothed, they did not clothe, they closed, closed the mouths of the lions. Y'all, sometimes my accent comes out. I was just talking to my friend and he was saying, uh, he was talking about my accent and I was saying like, I spent a lot of time trying to un-accent myself, especially in pageants going to speech classes and having them help me talk so I didn't sound like a hillbilly. <laughs> but it comes out when I get comfortable. Um, so, whatever. Anyway. Um, yeah, so back to the thing. Darius said you couldn't pray to anybody. That's a me kingdom. Darius was all about himself. Me, 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 me. King Darius, I want everybody to worship me. Dude, you can't answer nobody's prayers. You can't help nobody. Why do you want them to pray to you? Have them pray to somebody that can answer their prayers. Uh, the one and only God. Hello, Alpha Omega. Whoop, whoop. So, Daniel keeps praying to God, gets thrown into the den of lions, which everybody else got ate up, but he didn't. The angels come in, close the mouth of the lions, and then the angel, or no, the people came and King Darius came to check on Daniel and, and King Darius is like, Daniel, are you there? And King Darius wanted him to be there. King Darius loved him. They were friends. And so Daniel shouts out, yep, I'm here. I'm good. I'm safe. Like, how amazing is that? That King Darius is like, yeah, are you there? And Daniel's like, yep, I'm here. That's amazing. Why, why was he there? Well, because God protected him. Because Daniel was more worried. He was more concerned. He wasn't really worried. But Daniel was more concerned with building God's kingdom than building Daniel's kingdom. Could he have lost his life? Yep. Could he have lost his job? Actually, he did. He got thrown into the pit. And he could have died. But Daniel trusted God enough to say, you know what, God? I am serving your kingdom. I'm not serving my kingdom. I'm not serving the kingdom of me. I'm serving God's kingdom. I'm making God's name known. I'm not going to worry about my job. I'm not going to worry about my money. I'm not going to worry about my life. I'm going to give everything that I have to serve God's kingdom. That's pretty stinking awesome. I'm just saying. How many of us do that? How many of us are like, you know what? I'm just going to serve God's kingdom. No, a lot of us are worried about building our own kingdoms. I want my name on a shirt. I want to sell, I want to sell shirts with my name on them. Right? And I'm not picking on George. Um, I got this at a concert like 15 years ago. But anyway, we want our name in lights. We want to be seen, right? We want people to know us. We want to be famous. 
but do we want to be famous or do we want to make God famous? Because I can't help anyone, right? If people are like, Ashley Dawn, Ashley Dawn, Ashley Dawn. Oh, great. Thanks for the, thanks for the hype, man. But I can't help you. I can't give you what you need. I can't heal you. I can't fix your problems. But guess what? I can take your hand and I can put it in the hand of God and he can. So I'm going to build God's kingdom. I don't have a kingdom. Praise God I don't have a kingdom because if I did, nobody would want to live in it. Just saying, it wouldn't be that great. But God's kingdom is great. There's love, there's kindness, there's peace, there's patience. There's the fruit of the spirits. God's kingdom is amazing. And if we would just focus on God's kingdom instead of focusing on our own, we would be absolutely amazed. People are not going to remember what you did for yourself. They're going to remember what you did for them, but really for God. It says in the Bible that if somebody asks you for a drink of water because they're thirsty and you give them a drink of water, you are doing it for them, but God's getting the glory. And it's as if you did it for God. I want to do that. I want to give thirsty people water. I want to give hungry people food. I want to give naked people clothes. People that are hurting, I want to come alongside and love on them and encourage them. I want to be a good friend. And one day, I want to be a good wife. And I want to be a good mom. I want to be a good daughter. I want to be a good person that loves the Lord and lays her life down every single day for him. I want to build God's kingdom, not my own. So I encourage you, ask yourself, are you building your kingdom? Here, I want to change my parking spots. I don't really like this one. I want to change. You're allowed to change your mind. Um, are you building your kingdom or are you building God's kingdom? Because the two are very different. So do you want people to worship you or do you want people to worship God? Because if people are worshiping you, they're going to be really, really, really let down. But if people are worshiping God, oh my gosh, their life can be changed. So I just encourage you, let's be a little bit more humble. Let's focus more on God than we do on ourselves. And let's spend time with God. Let's spend time reading our Bible and praying. Not only praying for ourselves, but how about we pray for other people? How about we get on our knees and we pray for other people? One of my friends, um, his name's Hayden. He had a stroke and he had COVID and he was in the hospital. He's from Nashville. Um, he's a musician. And I was praying for him with his wife. And it was such an honor to see God move and do miracles in their life. I got to be a part of that because I was praying with them. We need to pray with people. If you see a single mom struggling and you got money, help her. Pray for her. Be there for her. If you see a widow or an orphan or you see somebody that you have the means to help, help them. If you see someone thirsty and you got a couple bottles of water, give them one. What do you have to lose? Nothing. You ain't got nothing to lose. I just want to encourage you. God loves you. I love you. You are seen, celebrated, and loved. But can we build God's kingdom instead of our own? Like, can we stop trying to, like, be on the merry me go round? Me, 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 me. I want this. I want this. I want this. I want that. Like, stop. This world ain't about you. It ain't about you. When things happen in my life, I'm like, it ain't about me. When people are mean to me, I'm like, it ain't about me. This is about God. I want to bring God as much glory as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make his name famous. I don't want to make mine famous. One of the most um, special moments of my life, which I went back and forth and whether I was going to share it on here or not, but I will because it might help somebody. I was at Graceland looking at all of Elvis's trophies and awards. And Elvis is one of my favorite uh, musicians of all time and artists of all time. But I was looking at all of his trophies and I was looking at all of his awards and it broke my heart because those trophies are on earth. 
they're not in heaven with him. Everyone knows Elvis's name for the most part. He's pretty famous on earth. But what would his life have looked like if instead of making himself famous, he made Jesus famous? And he did. He had his gospel uh, songs, which I love. But what if that's what he did his whole career? How different would his life be? How different would the memories that his daughter has of him be? How different would the memories that his wife had of him be? Just a thought. I hope it encourages you. I love y'all. You're special. Let's build God's kingdom instead of our own. Can we do that? Cool. I love y'all. I hope this encouraged you. Catch you later.